This is a perfect example of how a weird uncaught JavaScript error can wipe your entire database. Let's learn from it and try not to do this mistake. So there was an article a couple of days ago where Shopify claimed that one of the webhooks from the plugins that they offer actually wiped the whole database of a customer. So customers are able to install this kind of an app or a plugin I would rather call Ingress or Visitor Analytics. And it basically tracks all the clicks, all the visits, basically like Google Analytics, but for Shopify. Now what happened is that this plugin made some changes recently in their code and they were trying to destructure an object like this. So they wanted to take shop ID from shop ID. Now what happens is that shop ID was a primitive. So it was a number and shop ID did not have a shop ID key. Although the plugin was expecting the shop ID here to be an object that also had a shop ID key. Kind of doesn't make sense. So I'm not sure why they went through this route. And apparently this is just a little mistake that a developer missed. Now, the funny thing is that JavaScript is completely not doing anything here. It's silently assigning an undefined to a destructured variable. So shop ID in this case is basically going to result in undefined. So what happens is that if there's no object and there's a primitive, it's not going to say that, hey, the application broke, the, there's a type error. It's literally going to assign undefined to a shop ID, all right? Which means you cannot destructure this number. Uh, it's not an object, but still we're not throwing an error. And what happens is it basically the following, the ORM, ORM is kind of the thing that you can use to talk to your database. And this is what this plugin was using. They were using the Prisma and Prisma offers two ways of deleting data. You can delete or you can delete many. And these are the table names, event and visitor. So both of those tables got wiped out completely. And we were using, or they were using delete many. And sure, they have a where clause and you can kind of expect if the visitor ID or the, the value that you gave it is undefined, then this should bring some alarms. And guess what? <laughs> delete many actually does not care. So as soon as you provide an undefined value as they did here, and as it happens here, basically the whole where clause is not functioning. So it's basically deleting all the entries of the event table. The funny thing is, if you just use delete, not delete many, and give it a where clause and it's undefined, then it is going to throw an error. How interesting. Now what happened at the end of the day is the events table was wiped out, the visitors table wiped, wiped out, and the shops table, since a user probably had only one shop, um, it did not get deleted. And this is how they managed to find this issue by uh, following this failure. Now they managed to recover the data because of some uh, backups, obviously, that they did. And they're say, talking about comprehensive backup strategies. And this, just to dive a little into this, there are pretty much three ways of backups. So you can have a full backup. Literally, you take a snapshot of your whole database. And obviously, this is this can be very uh, big. So you can store you might have to store a lot of data for every minute, probably not ideal, not only at least, uh, you can have incremental backups, meaning you only back up some chunks. Still, it's good. Uh, not as bad as full backups because you don't have snapshots. Um, and the last one is point in time recovery, which means, for example, some database have logs. So every time something gets inserted, we have another log, we have another log and another log and point in time recovery basically replace all of these logs whenever you want to um, uh, re repopulate the data into the database. And for example, in Postgres, you will basically try to remind, uh, run some commands from the right ahead log and it's going to, uh, your database is going to be full with a data again. And this is the error that pretty much they found that shop cannot be deleted because the where clause was undefined. So if you delete, use delete many, obviously you're not gonna see this error. So what do they do? 
here are, are some resolution and hardening and something that you need to keep in mind for your future. So try not to use destructuring that much whenever there's critical data and you're talking to the database. Maybe try to access the data directly without restructuring. Second point, always try to validate the input. So they added this check, basically that it checks for a number. If there's not a number, we throw an error and we give it a response that it's a 400 stat HTTP status, all right? Also, third one, it's not really related to this error, but it's good to authenticate your webhook, web, webhook calls to make sure that um, no one who doesn't have access cannot call your webhook. What am I talking about? So when we uh, go to webhooks here, let's say you have an endpoint and your endpoint is basically going to be your webhook then that someone can call, right? So when you create a specific web webhook for Spotify, Spotify is gonna uh, give you a key and, uh, or give you a key, right? One key here, and it's gonna keep one key for itself. And every time it wants to send you a message, it's basically going to create a, create a hash and it's going to send a, a, this header that has a hash. So let's say XXX, right? Some kind of a hash and you're going to receive this header in the hash. And then using this key, you can decrypt this hash and make sure that this is actually um, Shopify who's sending you the data, right? And this is pretty much it. Just be very careful when talking to your database and uh, read the documentation through and don't really rely on the database to handle your errors actually or validate your input, validate it beforehand yourself and then use the database or ORM methods rather. All right, that's it. Hope you learned something new. Smash like and I'll see you in the next one.